Welcome back to my channel guys and today I am back with another true crime case and today I will be talking about the case of the Sauter children. Now this is one of the most perplexing cases in American history because n there's no real explanation of what happened to five of the ten Sauter children. Now this case took place on Christmas Eve in 1945 and George and Janine Sauter went to sleep on Christmas evening with nine of their ten children already asleep in the house. As a side note, their tenth child was actually away in the military, so he was not in the house that night. Now around 1 a.m., the house actually broke out in fire, and George and Jeannie were actually able to escape the fire with four of their children while five of them were still trapped upstairs. George reportedly broke a window and re-entered the house and he apparently scratched his arm pretty bad that it was profusely bleeding. He did not care. He wanted to find his five other children and he searched the whole first floor of the house with no luck. So he went back outside and he went to grab one of his ladders that he always keeps on the side of the house so that he would be able to go up to the second story window and rescue his children that way. Unfortunately, the ladder was gone. So George then had another idea of getting one of his trucks that he would be able to stand on and possibly reach the children that way. But when he went over to his trucks, they both would not start. Now reports do say that both of his cars were working perfectly fine the day before but mysteriously had stopped working when the fire broke out. So because that George trucks would not start he went back over and he and Jenny both watched their house burn down to the ground. One of their daughters who was able to escape the fire ran over to a neighbor's house and was banging on their door and had their neighbor call the fire department but unfortunately they could not get an operator on the phone. Also, a person from a neighboring town saw the blaze and also tried calling the fire department and still got no operator. One of their neighbors drove into town and was able to find the fire chief and told them about the fire. So they started what was their fire alarm, which was basically the fire chief called one fireman who then called another fireman and so on and so forth. And even though the fire department was only about two and a half miles away, they did not arrive until 8 a.m., seven hours later, and the house was already in ashes. The five solder children, Maurice 14, Martha 12, Louise 9, Jenny 8, and Betty 5 were all missing without a trace. As daylight came on Christmas Day, George and Jenny both checked out the house they were looking for remains of their five children, but had no avail. There was no bone fragments, there was no clothing, nothing to suspect that five children had burned in that house and died. After the fire, George had taken some dirt and basically just buried the basement with rubble and other stuff that he had from his business and just completely flatten it out so that they could build a memorial site for their five children. So the fire chief said that the fire could have destroyed all of the all five bodies in 45 minutes. In 45 minutes the house was totally destroyed. Yet Jenny was, they, she didn't believe this. So she took some bones of animals and burned them and still after every time there were some sort of bones remaining. Jenny had also talked with an employee at a crematorium who said that at 2,000 degrees for two hours there were still bones remaining. So there were a couple of strange events that basically led up to the house fire. One of them was a few months earlier a person came to the house looking for work and he had told George that the fuse box needed repair and had faulty wiring of some sort and it would cause a fire one day. But he had just had electricians out at the house and he, and they said that the wiring was just fine. There was nothing wrong with it. A life insurance 
policy man came just a few days before the fire broke out and George refused and he had actually said that your house is going to burn and you are going to pay. There was suspicious activity the night of the fire. One man was seen around the trucks messing with George's cars and when the fire breaks out, he tries starting the cars, they don't turn on. Now, the official ruling of what caused the fire was faulty wiring. Not just Jenny, but one of their daughters had reportedly seen the lights on downstairs and Jenny remembers turning off the lights as she went upstairs to go to bed. Let's say the fire was electrical. A repairman had actually came in and was able to look at the wires and he said that the wires looked like they were cut, not burned. So then that would take away the suspicion of the fire being electrical. Also, just around 45 minutes before the fire broke out, Jenny reportedly heard a loud thump on the roof of their house, and then 45 minutes later, their house was on fire. One other thing that I should add, just before Jenny went upstairs to go to bed, the phone had rang, and it was an unfamiliar number, and it was an unfamiliar female voice who also asked for an unfamiliar name. Jenny said you have the wrong number, but in the background she could hear a man laughing. George was born in Italy and he did not like the dictator Mussolini at the time. And so George would get into fights with other Italians of their small town of Fayetteville about the dictatorship and everything that was going on in Italy. So George had already had enemies who or people who did not like him because of his views. So some people believe that that was, that the fire was them getting back at George basically. Now, even though there's no real evidence of what happened to the Sauter children, there were three reported sightings of them within hours, days, and weeks of the fire. And one happened while the fire was in progress. So one woman s saw some of the Sauter children peering out of a car window, driving past her car while the fire was still going on. Another woman reported seeing them. She claimed that she served them breakfast. Another woman claimed to see four of the five of the children a week after the fire, and they were with two men and two women, all of Italian descent. When the woman tried talking to one of the children, the men stepped in and refused to talk, to let her talk to them. And she said that the children looked like they were scared and that they needed help, but she could not figure out what was wrong with them. And she also reported them leaving in a car with a Florida plate, which will come into importance later on in this video. In 1947, the Sodders had sent a letter to the FBI requesting their help in, their, in the case of finding their children. And the FBI responded saying that they would help only if local law enforcement and the fire department agreed with them helping out. And of course, the local police department and the fire department both declined the request. The Sodders hired many private investigators throughout the years to search for their children, and one of them, C.C. Tingley, was actually able to find out that the insurance policy salesman was actually a part of the group that deemed the fire accidental. This same private investigator also talked with the minister and found out that the fire chief confessed to the minister that he had found a heart at the site of the fire, put it in a box, and buried it and did not tell anyone. So as private investigators do, he convinced the chief, fire chief to take him to this spot where he buried the heart and they dug it up and after further examination, it turned out to be beef liver. And the reasoning why the chief started saying that it was a heart was if the Sodders were, would find this box with a 
quote unquote heart in it, then that would give them some proof that their children had passed away in the fire and would stop investigating into their deaths. In August of 1944, the Sauters decided to bring in a pathologist from Washington, D.C., and his name was Oscar B. Hunter. They searched the fire scene pretty extensively and they found several objects of interest. And some of these ended up being pieces of vertebrae. Now tests were done on the vertebrae and it was concluded that the bone had never been exposed to fire and it was also strange that no other bones were found along with the vertebrae. And it was eventually ruled to be um, what George had piled up on top of the basement as a memorial site for the children. The report also said that from how long that the fire was burning, just the 45 minutes, that there should have been four or five full skeletons when there was nothing. This report prompted two capital hearings where Governor Patterson and State Police Superintendent Burchett, I think is how you say it, declared that the case was hopeless and it was closed. Now like any parents would do, George and Jenny, they didn't care about this ruling and they ended up building a memorial um, on Route 16 and were passing out flyers with a $5,000 reward which was later amped up to $10,000 in the fact that they would find their children alive. Every lead and every tip that the Sodders got, George would go out and search these tips and every single time he would come back home empty-handed. Now, he did this up until his death, 1968. So he spent 23 years of his life investigating tips and leads to, find, to, to be able to find his five missing children. And one of the tips included a picture that looked like their youngest daughter, Betty, who was in a school picture in New York City. Now, George followed up on this tip and he went to New York City and tried talking with the girl's parents, but the girl's parents refused and that tip led nowhere. One of the tips that the Sodders got of their children was that one of their daughters, Martha, was actually in a covenant in St. Louis. And another one was actually a letter received to the Sauter's family and in it had a picture of a man that looked like to be Louis in his 30s. And written on the backside was Louis Sauter, I love Frankie, L.I. L.I. boys, and either A90132 or A90132. 135. The Sodders feared that if they published the letter that they received, it might cause harm or even death to Louie. So instead, they just updated the picture on the memorial site that they had. Another theory of what happened to the children is that they are actually that they were actually living with a relative of Jenny's in Florida. Hence, you go back to when the person at the motel saw them leave in a car with a Florida license plate. So there's no really knowing of what happened to the Sauter children that day. George also said that if they, if the children were actually burned in the fire, he would want proof of that. Otherwise, he would not stop looking for his children until the day that he died. And that is what George did. After the children went missing, Jenny only wore black for mourning. She never wore anything else. The only thing that she wore was black. After her husband died, Jenny just basically kept adding more layers to her house, more rooms, anything that she could to separate herself from the outside, and she eventually died in 1989. After she died, one of the billboards did come down, but that did not stop the remaining Sauter children and now their grandchildren in the search of finding their siblings. So the children actually had theories of their own, and some of these theories included that the Mafia tried to recruit George and George refused, so then they burnt down their house and took five of their beloved children. Another was they tried to extort money from him and he refused 
and also that somebody had broken into their house and taken the five children and that person was somebody that they knew. One thing that I found was that was reported differently was some said that Jenny had locked the front door, others said that the front door was unlocked. If the door was locked then they would have to find another way to enter the house but if the door was unlocked they could just go through the front door take the five children and leave without anybody ever hearing now the children and the grandchildren believed that if the children were killed then they were killed the night of the fire otherwise the they were kept alive the youngest and last surviving of the solder children sylvia believes that her siblings did not pass away in that fire and instead she believes that somebody took them out of the house and kept them away from their family but guys please let me know down in the comment section below what you think happened to the solder children what you believe do you think that they perished in the fire or do you think something else happened to them? But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next video.